dynamics can be quite hard to come by in drum and bass. Everything's pushed to the extreme. I would sort of at times say um, an explanation of that analogy is like nose to the grindstone, really. You know, like the, the drops and the, the loudest parts of the tracks really are full on. You know, like heavy metal or, or any type of full on music, it's hard to create that that dynamic that you may necessarily want to convey to, to the listeners. Within dance music, we have quite a clear defined structure at times of an intro, sort of build ups, drops, breakdowns, and other sections that we can use, little dropouts that we can use to create this contrast between uh, dynamics. One really important thing to remember with drum and bass, depending on the style that you're making, is it, it, it can be really nice to be quite concise with the way that sounds cut out and allow other sounds to breathe and play and, and, and sort of move around the priority of letting different sounds play at different times. So in, in this track, Fake Money, I, um, I've, I've tried to be very clinical in terms of cutting out any pad sounds or anything that could create a wash or a, or a blur between the breakdown or the dropouts um, or the intro and the actual drop itself. So if we listen to the, the build-up going into the drop and we'll see it all cuts before a mid-range bass plays and the whole track drops in. Also, we can have a look at the waveform quite quickly before we do that and we can see this is the waveform for uh, Fake Money and we can see that on the intro it's really consisting of some hi-hats and then what we can see in the background is sort of like the plucky pad melody sound, the off-key sound, the gamelan style sound at the start, playing with some other background noises and it's a lot, lot quieter as you can see than the actual drop itself. When we get into the drop over here, it's, it's quite full on. It's not just a pure brick wall. However, you can see there's very little space left. I've tried to make sure that everything has its own little place. But yeah, let's have a listen to the actual track itself and the section before the drop and how uh, I try to be very clinical in terms of cutting everything else before the, the mid-range bass comes in and then the track drops. anything objective. It's about a collective story that we tell each other about value. A collective fiction. And that's a really powerful concept. So yeah, it's quite a common thing for things to get quite intense before, before a drop. It's not always the done thing, but it's, it's quite conventional to really build into a drop really build the intensity in the, in the higher mid-range. But also we've got a vocal playing at this time, so I had to be a little bit sympathetic and understanding to the fact that there is a vocal trying to play with a lot of effects and madness in the background. I've got this weird sound that I've um, I've recorded from my, uh, it's, it's called a Lyra, Soma Synth Lyra, and I love that for creating build-up sounds and, and just weird spaciness in the background. And everything, as you can see with this audio file really, at this point here, where we hear that mid-range bass suddenly hitting, everything cuts there. And that just creates a lot of space for that particular sound to play, really pushes that to the front, gives it that priority, and also kind of gives you that little signal that something's going to happen. And then by the time the actual drop comes in itself, none of that, none of those effects, none of the, the, the background sounds are playing. It is possible to keep those background sounds going. It's something I commonly do in my tracks. Maybe we leave some of them running, the side chain kicks in a little bit, they're pumping in the background, it gives, a, it gives you that feeling of, of, of like a pump in the mix, of, of a compression and more, or more depth. For this track, I really wanted this first drop to be the most important drop. It's not something I always do, but, but yeah, in this track, it's very obvious that that's what's happening. So we'll just have a list, little listen to this section, this tiny little section again, and just, just notice the way that things drop out very clinically, very quickly before the drop kicks in. And just that variation between dynamics and, and, and frequencies and taking you from one place to the other. Really powerful concept. Okay, so even dropping out the bass in sections and allowing another sound to play in a different frequency area like here. 
is that that this sound is not a bass sound. It's, it's actually a synth sound. It sounds quite like a percussive sort of sound, but it gives it a different sort of feeling, different impression than that this constant full on 40 hertz sub bass which if that was just to continue to play all the time again it doesn't really create much contrast and and and, and much uh, difference between when things are and aren't happening it's it's important to try and understand how these intricate use quite clinical use of of dynamics of of space of of frequencies and how we can use them to kind of create different uh, feelings in the track, give different signals towards where we're going, what's happening, whether we're dropping into a breakdown or coming into a drop itself or or we are in, in just generally in a build-up.